Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. I'll tell you what the Andromedans, Morinae, and Paseus have said about the moon. And I, I want to take questions, so I want to get through this. They have said that our moon is an artificial satellite. In fact, it is a spacecraft. Much of the debris on the surface was put there and was built purposely to make it look like what it isn't. Okay, it is hollow, it is metal underneath it, and uh, it has the ability to leave our orbit under its own power. <laughs> they say it came from Ursa Minor, from a, so uh, uh, a solar system that would have the symbol or uh, would have the name in our language of Chauta. It was one of four moons that rotated around the 17th planet. Now it was built the sun, just like Star Wars, it was built around that 17th planet. It was then put into the tail of a comet and then dragged here. And when it got to this area, it removed itself. And the first place it parked itself in our solar system was the planet that we now know of as Moldek, which is the asteroid belt. Right. It was one of two moons that belonged there. Maldek was the first inhabited planet in our solar system. It was very much like Earth. Mars and our planet were terraformed from Maldek or Malona or whatever name you want to call it. It was terraformed. In other words, all the plant life and everything that is on the surface and animal life was brought here. It was brought here. You know, science Science tells us that, you know, everything started with a single cell. The Andromedans laughed at that, you know. And, and, and Paseus said to me, well, if that's true, then how does that one cell know to become a brain cell and a kidney cell? <clears throat> I couldn't answer him because I don't know. He says it isn't possible. Our solar system has been engineered, built and engineered. Okay? The whole solar system. <laughs> I don't know where this guy's getting his information from. Fantastic claims require fantastic evidence. I just heard one fantastic claim after another there. There's audio recording from the 1970s from Northern California. They call them the uh, samurai sounds. And it's the weirdest ever, man. These guys had this spot that they would go into the into the mountains and they claim to have recorded sounds of these animals these bigfoot and that they these bigfoot were around them all the time while they were up there but they, they're like blah, 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 this very strange sound <laughs> Okay, just listen, listen to the guy and yeah. these you know supposed vocal experts are analyzing it the human body is incapable of making such sounds <laughs> that sounds eerily close to the way they described the little four foot bigfoot guys that live in the solomon islands that we were just talking about in yesterday's video eerily eerily similar china did have a one child policy but um like about 10 years ago they changed it to a two child policy and then a few years ago they changed it to a three child policy mm. and birth rate kept plummeting the whole time what, what, so they had the lowest birth rate ever last year well, really yeah china's birth rate right now is 40 percent below replacement what we face uh, is co population collapse Huh. Collapse. Like people have no idea how fast the population is going to collapse. Um, what are we? Trying Japan to is pretty far along in that. Like Japan actually uh, lost like six hundred that went down by six hundred thousand people last year. The Japanese are not in the bedroom at all. Then <laughs> it would not seem, at all. It would seem not. What about um, what about the U.S.? We got to increase, right? Yeah, what I'm saying is the, the U.S. has been below replacement rate for fifty years. The only That's reason so the population nuts. has increased like is yearly or since saying. the 70s. Yeah, since the early 70s, since like 71, 72. Um, so why are we spewed with all those BS that, yeah, we're overpopulating, but the population's growing, right? No, it's not. That's exactly what they want to happen, too. It's sad because it's all this push to uh, put a divide between men and women and, instead of helping us be all benefit from each other's differences and come together they're dividing us and driving wedges in between us and and 
increasing divorce rates and ruining people's lives, ruining the lives of children, and more importantly, causing people to decide to not have kids. They feel like it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk and the headache. I'd just like to say real quick, I apologize if I look tired. I'm not tired. It's sinuses. The Paranormal Chick here. This video recently went viral as a man had told his wife he was at work and decided to go skiing instead. And he sang a little Christmas jingle, which was hilarious. But the crazy part about this video and shout out to one of my followers who caught this, he captures an actual Bigfoot on his GoPro. Now, take a look at the video. I have slowed it down and I've enhanced it so you can see it's an actual Bigfoot. This is groundbreaking. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. You better watch out. You better not die. You better not crash. I'm telling you why. Cause you told your wife you're at work. That looked like every cardboard cutout that I've ever seen of a Bigfoot with his arm out that you see people stick in their yard. Look at this. Look at this. They're literally breaking in the door. Look at this. Hello, how are you? This is EMS from the police department. Look at this. I just want look 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 at what's happening in America. Look at this. Look at this. You're not in trouble. I know that. Okay. I don't have a reason to be in trouble. Absolutely not. We just we're just asking you to come to the hospital. I don't want. I don't need to go to the hospital. How dare you tell me I have to go to the hospital? So because of what we've heard. Who is it's we? Who's so we? My, myself and my, my fellow social worker. From where? Who's we? We're from Bellevue. How? Look at, so Bellevue, are you kidding me? So, so they so really so want me to go to Bellevue. Are you kidding me? So listen, from, so from what Are you heard, kidding me? From what we've heard is... So I don't know what's going on here because I have no context for this clip. I dug through the comments and just a bunch of other people saying what's going on. One thing I will say about it is if this is happening in the United States, it should not be happening. You have a right to deny health care. I can lay there and die if I want to. My business. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I'm making a new one just like it every single day. It would be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. We have heard through a lot of people that with the UFO thing, that we're considered containers. And this is like kill me. What does this mean? container of what have you heard this before that ufo lore that were containers what do you make of that containers of what what's that mean well i don't i don't actually know if the first instance of that coming out was through bob lazar i'm not sure but um but it, it's i know uh in linda moulton Howe's work that phrase came up and i know of a couple of other instances that seem to be independent where it's come up <clears throat> i believe now uh i mean this is a. <clears throat> I can't say that i can prove this no no this is just because i'm curious what you think man because this is just having the convo with friends you know i personally have a of a belief in a soul I, I believe in that i believe that i have a soul i believe that you guys have souls i believe that we all have a soul and uh i don't know if i always believed that but i I think I believe that now. In fact, I'm pretty sure I believe that now. And um, we tend to think in our society, we, we think of spiritual things with, with an ethical component because we have the Judeo-Christian tradition where there is a very strong ethical orientation to, to spirituality. But what if there's a society that has spiritual technology but doesn't necessarily have the same ethics about spirituality that we might have. What if for them, uh, they're naturally telepathic, which I think 
maybe. Uh, and what if they are naturally aware of a spiritual realm that we are not always naturally aware of? Just what if? So if that's the case, it would be something that they would deal with in a very practical matter. And would they have the ability to uh, <laughs> remove and insert souls into bodies? That's really the question. So if like, they do, the body would be the container. So like to mature a soul like a, a good wine, is that, that could be the implication from our theoretical thinking here. If someone, if you posit the existence of a soul, if it's, if it's believable, which to, again, to me it is, and if you uh, hypothesize that other societies can recognize this and, and deal with it technologically in some way, maybe through some kind of quantum field technology that I certainly cannot understand. To, um, could, you trans <laughs> could you transport souls in containers and then apportion them out into bodies? I mean, all right, it sounds like sci-fi. Maybe that's all it will ever be. But when I hear containers like that, it does make me think they're soul containers. Yeah, I just want to get your opinion on it. You know, I, I, I think maybe we're informational containers. We're more like transmitters than we are um, anything else. Our physical body seems to form, and maybe we're, you know, we're holding some sort of technology. It's part of a plan. I don't know. I'm just talking as a friend now because me and my buddy have been talking about this a bunch. I figured I'd get your take. I don't know. I think our body is just the vessel that our mind is currently using or our consciousness is currently using to experience its environment. I agree that our body could be viewed as a sort of container. I believe that we have souls. So in that sense, I believe that we could be souls in a body container. Past that, all everything else they were talking about, they started to confuse me. right there are divers down there they can't get out of there and well it's strange enough but it gets even stranger Divers are safe, but even so, what the heck? Those are our divers. Dive flags up. I don't know what's scarier in that situation. Either the divers that are down in the water and don't realize what's going up overhead and might come up potentially while the boat is going right over them, of course they would look up and see it, but if they were experiencing an emergency and needed to surface, they'd be in trouble. Or second, the fact that no one seemed to be on that ship and it was going full speed. My first thought is uh, there was mutiny afoot. <laughs> And nobody made it out. Uh, hopefully, it was nothing too bad. Hopefully, all the people on board got rescued. If you want to know the truth of demons and aliens, stick around. I have some really important information for you. I got to tell you about the experiences I've had the past six months, and they all started with him, Dr. Stephen Greer. He has an app called CE5, and what it claims to do is it claims to be an app that if you listen to it, it has certain tones and vibrations, and if you meditate to it, you can literally call on ETs up in the sky to come into your vision, okay? I was super skeptical at first, I didn't believe it, 
but I was starting to really explore the alien phenomenon. So I tried it. Nothing happened the first time, okay? I was skeptical, but I still tried it. Nothing happened. Fast forward a couple weeks, I came across someone else and started doing this mantra where I it would help call things in. And all of a sudden, I started having the ability to call things to me. Literally, I would call through telepathy things in the sky to me, and I have them on video. There's proof, and I want to show you what they are and tell you what they really are. First, I want to say stay away from this app. Okay, what I experience, you do not want to experience, and it is different than what you think. It is not, you are not calling friendly ETs to you. He claims that they have this amazing technology and they can, if they can travel from galaxy to galaxy, they have this technology that could blow us up in a nanosecond. And if they had evil intent, they would have done that already. It's all a lie. It's all nonsense to get you to call on something else. And I'm going to get to that. Stay away from this. I'm serious. Do not go download this and try this. This is a global diplomatic initiative between humans and these very advanced civilizations from other star systems. We make contact with them and then invite them to interact with us. So these civilizations have been around for hundreds of thousands, millions of years. They know the trajectory. They know that we need a course correction. If you are advanced enough to travel faster than the speed of light under controlled circumstances and go from one star system to here, you have technologies that if you were hostile, you could terminate all human civilization in a nanosecond. And they have not. Look, when I first heard about him and I started buying into it, I was knee deep into diving into proving aliens were real. And what I did was I proved the complete opposite. Okay, what is going on? is he is literally giving you the ability to conjure demons, okay? There aren't other star systems, there aren't other galaxies, there aren't other planets, everything is local right here. We are in God's creation, and what he is teaching you to do is to literally conjure demons to you. And I didn't realize this at first until I started seeing things in the sky, and then I started having demonic attacks. And I wanna show you some evidence of this, and just please, Stay away. Do not do this. Do not try this. You are literally inviting evil to you. And I'm going to try to show you how true and real this is. Don't do it. Man's a liar. He wants you demonically attacked. So this was the very first time that I called something to me using just literally mental telepathy and a mantra. And this came out of nowhere and it started approaching me. I didn't have my phone on me and it was coming right at me. As soon as I grabbed my phone to start filming it, it's literally took a different turn in direction, but it is not a mylar balloon. It is not a weather balloon. It was literally a pulsing orb of light. And I thought this was so cool at the time, but I didn't realize what it was. Okay. And I want to show you another one too. So as I said, I thought I was literally calling ET vehicles or UFOs or UAPs to me. I had no idea that they were spiritual in nature. And what started happening to me is I started having demonic attacks while I was sleeping. Literally, I would be wrestling with a shadow creature or a demon, and I would wake up and I had never in my life experienced something so real and not dream state, but actually just felt like I was in another dimension. And then I would wake up with sleep paralysis. I literally couldn't move. I was fully awake, fully conscious, couldn't move, couldn't. I tried calling out for my wife who was right next to me. I couldn't talk. All I could do was change my vision all my muscles were frozen, but I realized, you know, almost right after that first happened, I researched it and it said, as people are having spiritual awakenings, this happens a lot. They're demonically attacked. Sleep paralysis is strongly related to demonic attacks. So as I'm saying, stay away from trying to call things to you. It is not what you think. Do not do it. I want to show you one last video of someone actually experiencing a demonic attack. If you've ever had demons attack you while you sleep, you're going to want to watch this. This is real, guys. I would have never thought it was until it happened to me. Right now. 
this is out of order, but I wanted to include it. This was another time I literally, these, nothing was in the sky and I did my thing and I called on orbs of light to me. There was one that even buzzed my head down low. Stay away from this stuff. Okay, the sleep paralysis thing looked ridiculous. I'm not even going to address it. The first part of this got me thinking, so I'm going to think out loud here. And don't take anything that I say to heart. I'm literally thinking out loud. Uh, all right, so it makes me think of all these strange depictions that we've seen of some of these UFOs, some in videos that we've seen. Uh, these weird uh, anamorphous shapes almost look biologic in form, like the jellyfish and then the thing that looked like a ball that had the the sucker, tentacle sucker things all over it, and it almost seemed to be breathing. If you look at that artist's rendition, everybody knows the famous uh, photos of what aliens supposedly actually look like, like a huge eyeball with rings and what, flames and wings and stuff on it, and um, everyone's seen all those images. They look eerily close to some of these shapes that you see of UFOs, and if that's what angels look like, but they all look different, then could that be demons flying around up in the air that we're mistaking for UFOs? That So maybe the depiction of those demons and angels from the Bible are actually depicting the crafts of the creatures or of the angels and the demons. Maybe the angels and demons look more like us, and those are just how they get around. I went too deep. I went too deep. Have you heard of the prison planet theory? Well, guess who just learned about it? Yeah. I didn't sleep last night. I did not sleep last night. And if you keep watching this, you're probably not going to sleep either. So here I am minding my own business on Reddit when I found Escaping Prison Planet. And for the next three hours, I dove too deep. Here's the gist of it. Essentially, we're all trapped here on Earth. We're all trapped here. And everything we know about, you know, like all the religions that believe in reincarnation, all these different things. Yeah, we keep coming back to this Earth because there are astral beings that are harvesting our energy and they are trapping us here. Sounds crazy, right? Sounds crazy. Well, let's get into the details. Apparently these beings that are controlling us are these reptilian beings that you always hear about. Well, let's dive into it, you know? In Jainism and Hinduism, they have Nagas, half human, half serpent. The Aztec empire talked about a serpent-like god that they called Quetzalcoatl. And don't tell me if I pronounced it right or wrong. I don't care, okay? Surely, two instances, right? This is just a coincidence. African shamans talk about the Shitari, and it is a race of reptilian beings. The Hopi Indians in North America had the Shaiti, which translates to snake brothers. Chinese, Japanese, and Korean legends all talk about the Kappa. And Gnostic tests, which if you don't know about the Gnostics, Gnosis just means knowledge, and basically what the Gnostics believed was after Christ died, you have to have particular knowledge that would save you. Well, the Gnostics, yeah, they believe in archons, which are parasitic entities that feed off of us. We're doing okay? We doing okay? So the question is why? What, what are these beings doing? Why are they here? Apparently, they have been involved from the foundations of human history in manipulating us, creating this soul trap, harvesting our energy. And what this theory proposes is essentially that light a tunnel that many people have talked about that have had near-death experiences or death experiences. Yeah, it's just to trick us to essentially wipe us clean, send our souls back and start the process again. So every major form of religion talks about how we have a soul. Well, we are a soul, we have a body, right? This body is essentially a rental car. And these beings, what they feed off of, what the energy they feed off of is this low vibrational energy. So whether it's stress, whether it's fear, whether it's contention, pain, grief, jealousy, rage, all of it, anxiety, that's what they feed off of. And so they manipulate and they toy with us and they do all these things to create this energy. Now, I don't know if this is true, but that kind of describes the world we live in. Kind of describes it pretty damn well. I mean, look what Tesla says. He says, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. What freaks me out the most is there's so many urban legends talking about these freaking reptilians. You know, that motherfucker right there is not real, right? Like everything that's going on in freaking Miami, like, like I think we can all agree that there's multiple dimensions, right? People have an experience, experiences on psychedelics where multiple people take the same thing and they all go to another dimension and see the same thing. Like, how do you explain that? How do you explain that? Explain it to me, please. 
I'm going way too long with this and I haven't even freaking scratched the surface. I haven't even scratched the surface, but basically we're just all here. Life is engineered to create this low vibrational energy. And what happens is when we die, when we go through that light tunnel, we're tricked into thinking, hey, you need to go back to earth. There's more you need to learn or there's karma you need to resolve or, you know, there's a higher purpose that you need to do. And we come back and it's the same thing. Listen, I'm a very spiritual person very spiritual. I believe all of us as humans are connected. I believe you look at every major world religion and there's commonalities and that it's because it stems from this eternal knowledge. But this freaking scared the crap out of me. Because what if it's all just engineered to trick us? Anyways, I can dive deeper if you guys are interested, but uh, if you're not, whatever. I'll just be sitting up at night, not being able to sleep. Again, just understand I'm just thinking out loud for the fun of it. But... And, and I mean that seriously. I know a lot of people say that because they talk conspiracies and they think they have to say that to keep from being demonetized. But in this specific situation, I am just thinking out loud for the fun of it. This video seems to put a little more emphasis on the idea that maybe the angels or the angels and or demons are the UFO activity that we've been seeing. Uh, running off that idea, it could be that we are in a specific point in Revelations and not even realize it, if Revelations is real. Fun thought games. That's all it is, just fun thought games. These creatures are harvesting us. These creatures are not aliens, Mr. Ike. These creatures are sexually compatible with our women. And what does that tell you? It tells you that they came from here. They are part of us. African tradition says that the cheetah will fatten on the energy that we human beings give them. They make us to fight each other. And when the whole land is drowning in death and fear and terror, when hundreds and hundreds of people are angry and afraid, the cheetah will get fat because they eat that, that what we call the dark power, which is brought about when human beings destroy the planet on which they live. Apparently, this is Zulu mythology. These creatures, I hope you're not about to go to sleep, um, are have been around for a very, very long time. There are snake people that uh, apparently originated in the, in the oceans and they developed very powerful, complex tools uh, when humanity was new upon Earth and with their technology, they decided to enslave humanity and even celestial beings. They were driven underground and said to hide in the center of the Earth to this very day. And here's a quick video about someone talking about these. And uh, yeah, like I said, I hope you're not about to go to bed. A little more evidence pointing that direction. <laughs> Again, I'm just saying that because uh, I think it's I think it's fun to think about. All this stuff is fun to think about. That's why I love this kind of content. I'm gonna go ahead and call the the end of this video. I hope you come back and join me tomorrow for the next one. I will be here waiting for you. I will see you then. Have a great safe day. I will see you tomorrow.